the it was after the abduction for sure. I would say probably um, around 1990, 1994, my guess, 95, maybe something like that, 1993, 94, 1994, 1995. Yeah, because there were several activations that happened after 1987, after the harmonic convergence. And oh. all the people that are abductees have been activated at different points. That, as far as I know, you know, and, and some of these activations come through dreams, they come through knowing, they come through um, psychic abilities, healing abilities that you suddenly discover that you have, that sort of thing. Also right. Kundalini risings, yes. you know, and, and um, a lot of things that happen in water, for instance, uh, you'll have like epiphanies when you're in the ocean or epiphanies when you're in the bathtub because uh, that's a, a very good, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, Condu conductive uh, mm -hmm. material, water. So yeah, uh, so I'm not surprised that it was in 94 because all those years that, that followed the 87 were really strong years for a lot of abductees. Right, right, I didn't know that. That's, thank you for, for, for sharing that with me. Yeah. I had no idea, like, you know, one of the reasons, uh, one of the big reasons I actually hear talking about this is that I don't know why this has happened to me um, and I'm trying to glean any kind of information that I can uh, and, and typically if I you know uh, like uh, like last week um, when I was talking to Ian uh, about some of these things um, I'm trying to remember what happened to me in my lifetime Ian, and I remember that when I'm talking with somebody like Ian for example last, last time he triggered some memories and that I totally forgotten and and uh, and and I'm trying to sort of really put everything down that you know and maybe if I could put everything down in, in a chronological sequence and all these things that are happening maybe I can get some sense of why or what's what's going on you know mm -hmm. uh, so uh, anyways uh, thank you for sharing that and 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 the thing is that after the abduction. Um, I got a book uh, on abduction uh, but from, uh, by Bud Hopkins, and um, and I read the book and I noticed at the back of the book he had his mailing address, so in case anybody else has had these experiences, etc. And so I sent him uh, a letter, um, and I and I remember writing the letter sort sort of like it was sort of like you know you're probably going to think I'm crazy and you can chuck this in the garbage, etc. Uh, you know, but this is what happened to me. This is this is my experience, and to my surprise, he actually answered it. Actually, he didn't answer it. it was it was his assistant Peter Robbins who answered it, and he said, you know, would you like to? Uh, we can recommend like a regression uh, a therapist for you, a hypnotist, uh, to try to re recover those memories if you want. And I said, sure. And so. So this is where it gets kind of another kind of strange kind of thing happening. He sends me, they, they send me this, uh, the, the name of this one woman, this, uh, this, uh, this other, this woman who lives in San Francisco. And she happens to be an abductee as well since she was very young. And, but she's been trained in doing this regression and that sort of thing. So, so I go down there, I go to San Francisco. And um, the, first, and the first thing that I notice is when I walk in her door, uh, is that she's got boxes everywhere. She's moving. And I ask her, oh, you're moving. I just casually, you know, uh, bring it up. And, and she says, yes, I'm getting out of California. I have to leave California. And I'm thinking, okay, that's weird. And then she, does, I, I, she says, I can only do one, one regression for you. And that regression didn't do it for me. I couldn't remember anything. So finally, I, so I sent back a letter to uh, Bud Hopkins, Peter, uh, Robbins replies and says uh, something like, okay, uh, here's this other lady, and she happened to be in Hayward, California at that time, which is in the East Bay, which is not too far from Fremont, uh, where we live. And uh, so so she, um, so I, I go to meet her, and she says, I can only do a couple of sessions for you because I'm moving out of California. And I said, interesting, why are you moving out of California? Well, it's not safe here. It's, it's not going to be safe. And then I tell her of my, of my 
you know, when I woke up, like, or, when, or when, after the abduction, this other, this other imperative to get the hell out of California. And so, um, so anyways, uh, she, she goes on to tell me that she has a friend, uh, like uh, a male friend who, who is a, who is a survivalist, but he's in the Sierra mountains inside the California border. And even he is moving out of California. Wow. So, so this is like, like, okay, what's going on? You know, uh, I have no idea what's going on. And for the next, my, my poor wife, she was deluged, uh, deluged uh, uh, daily with, uh, uh, with my insisting that we move out of California. <laughs> we eventually did, uh, but it wasn't until 2003. Uh, and uh, I was, I was kind of glad to get the, the heck out of there. And to this day, I don't know why. I mean, you know, I mean, in the, in the past, I've heard like, you know, remember that movie 2012 and California sliding into the ocean and everything like there was a lot of, there were a lot of rumors like that, but it, but it, but it wasn't for that particular thing. It wasn't, because I didn't really believe that would happen. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's really possible to, to, to happen. Uh, so a lot of uh, people think that's exactly what's going to happen, Norberto. Okay, yeah. You know, a lot of people believe that. Yeah, I, I, I know there's, and that's why I think they, they brought it up in that movie. It was sort of like, uh, you know, uh, they, they... Um, I just wanted to say here, I uh, wanted to interject something yeah. that might be of interest to you and to other people is that um, there was a very, very good interview three days ago okay. by Richard Dolan interviewing Peter Robbins about okay, his yes. abduction. Yes. And yes. I've posted it in the discussion section of our meetup. Okay. The URL is posted there. Thanks. I thought it was fantastic, very real. I, I love Richard Dolan anyway. And yes. uh, Peter Robbins was great. So it's it seems to be connected with you. So... Have a yeah, look thank at you it. very much. I'll, I'll definitely yeah. Yeah, take a look. Yes, thank you. And um, yeah, so um, so uh, you know, I, I had all the. It wasn't until probably after we moved back here, um, maybe around two thousand and four, two thousand five. I don't remember exactly what year that I tried to uh, have another uh, regression. Um, I found somebody. Uh, uh, who would do the regression for me uh, because I had been doing some uh, some healing work at uh, there was at, the, at this one mm, uh, organic uh, big, uh, vitamin shop in um, like all these this place that's, that that sold these kinds of products and they had this big space in the back and the woman who owned the shop uh, decided to open it up for people who wanted to do healing with that so I I, I went there. And I met this uh, therapist there, and uh, she she agreed to do to do the hypnotherapy for me. And it wasn't until she did that for me that I kind of made a breakthrough. But even then, that breakthrough, I keep thinking to myself, is it really? Uh, it, it, you know, I I keep thinking, am I confabulating this because? When 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 she put me under, I say under. Uh, when I, when I got into this state of mind, uh, what I recalled, what I what I think I recalled was uh, that um, I found myself on a table with three other beings, small beings, like thin small beings, but I could never see their faces. I could never see their faces. I don't know why. I, I just would not, was not allowed to, or I was just blocking myself for not seeing them. I was, just, I don't know what it is, um, doing it to myself or whatever. But <clears throat> um, I remember feeling absolutely bored, completely bored. I'm on the table and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, and I'm talking, I'm telling her this, saying like, oh, here we go again. This is boring, you know, blah, 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 you know, et cetera. And she asked me, and she asked me if I know these, these, these aliens. I said, yeah, I know them and, and everything else. And then at the end of this uh, procedure, I don't even know what the procedure was. Um, one of them walks me out to uh, outside this 
examination room into a big curved hallway. And there's like a window and I can see the earth below us. Okay. And it's, it's, it's not, it's not that far. I mean, it's probably at the height of uh, maybe a little bit higher than the international space station would be. Uh, and, um, and I see like fire and, and explosions and like lava and everything and the earth is being destroyed. Okay. And I get so angry. I get really angry. And I say, those so-and-so's bleep, bleep, bleep are doing it again. Okay. And, um, and then the hypnotherapist says, stop. And she says, go back to the first time you felt this emotion, this, 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 you had this feeling. And suddenly I find I'm completely confused and I'm, I'm, and I'm looking around and I'm no longer where I was. I'm in this great big, um, uh, building, uh, with uh, marble floors, mar marble columns on one of the, on one, one of the walls is huge, uh, a huge, um, maroon colored, like a drapery. It's a, it's a decoration. Um, uh, and, um, and I look down at my feet and I'm wearing sandals and I have this kind of like this skirt, what looks like a skirt on. And in my left hand, I'm holding a spear. And I'm thinking like, what, <laughs> what's going on? And, and so she asked me to describe the scene. I'm telling her what I see. And, um, and then she says, okay, why, why, why here? And, and then I, I, again, I get into this motion. These bleep, bleep guys, they're destroying the Republic. I'm saying, and I, I'm, I'm listening to myself say this out of nowhere. And I'm thinking like, what the hell am I saying? What is, what is, what's going on? And, um, so, so she, after, after telling her this, she says, okay, stop and go to the moment that you die in that particular life. And suddenly, and I have no idea where this comes from. Suddenly I just arch my back in pain and I yell out in pain and I feel an extremely sharp steering pain up in my left kidney area. And I don't know how I, I, I come to understand that my friend has killed me. He's used one of those, the, the gladios, the Roman swords, and he, and he shoved it into my kidney area. Uh, and, and, and I feel completely, I have this overwhelming emotion of betrayal and I have tears running down my eyes. This, that my friend betrayed me. But then after the fact of this regression, I'm thinking to myself, and it, it comes to me that no, he actually did me a favor because um, evidently from what I got out of this thing, and I don't know if this is true or not, but this is what I what fell out of this, uh, of this regression, is that I was complaining about the elites in that time period in, in the Roman Republic. And that I was complaining and I was supposed to keep quiet because I'm, I'm this military or whatever. And, and I was not supposed to talk about this. And so they knew about this and they were going to kill me and they were going, and they were going to, if they would have killed me the normal way for, for somebody like me to say these things, they would, they would have probably crucified me or something. And that would have been a real horrible slow death. So my friend basically did me a favor. He gave me a quick death. So, so that was the, so that was the, the gist of what I came out of that. But the, re, the abduction part of it, it was, I, I'm seeing, I guess I'm seeing this, this, even today, I see these elites or whoever they are doing this kind of thing and don't even get me started. Okay. They're, 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 they're deliberately go, pr trying to promote a war and that sort of thing. And, and it's going to be, you know, it's, it's just, it's just not right. These people always seem to get away with it. So. Anyways, um, uh, this is, um, this is, uh, you know, my, my abduction and, and, uh, and the post abduction kind of a thing. So. Well, oh, and, Norbert, and, Norbert yeah, and, so I, I have to tell you something to corroborate with you. Yeah. Um, in my experience, when I was, when I was abducted, I was shown Mars exploding. Oh, oh thank you for, for reminding me. Okay. Yes. Thank and you. I was told that 
the earth would be would have the same fate. So what you're saying to me really reverberates with what I'm with what I was shown. Um, I was told that uh, that it, we we need to take care of the water. That the water is the most important thing for that not to happen. But um, I see a lot of a lot of connection between your your experiences and mine, even though mine were really really different. But the burning earth is uh, is just like the burning Mars that I saw. Yeah. So thank you for that. No, th and thank you for reminding me because th this is perfect for this is why I love to talk uh, uh, like put this out and, and other people feed feedback to me because when you said Mars I suddenly remembered this dream that I had a recurring dream I used to have like years and years ago and in that dream I am standing uh, on a very dusty deserty sandy planet okay and the and there are buildings old buildings like like hollowed out buildings um, it's, it's like a street, uh, and but there, but it's it's all sandy, and and there are there's me and a bunch of other people, and we're standing on either side of this great big trench in the middle of the street. Okay, very big trench with really huge pipes. I think it's like a subway or something like that, uh, whatever. And they're explaining something. The whoever it is is explaining something to us, and. I'm kind of bored in this in this in this dream, and I wander off, and I go into uh, behind one of the buildings, and I see one of the collapsed collapsed walls, and the sand filling up the the area, like in the basement or something of that building, and I go into that building, you know, um, and um, that became a recurring dream for many for, for many 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 times. I mean. Uh, uh, being on a, I don't know where this is. Uh, it, it, it's very, it's very dry. It's, it, it's, it's, it's like it's it used to be a civilization, uh, and I don't know if they're trying to restart it or they're explaining that this was something else and it's just an uncovered trench. But it was a very large, very wide trench, and uh, and um, and uh, there were a few of us, quite a few of us there, just witnessing this. Okay. So um, yeah, that's something. Um, and uh, so basically, um, what I want to show you is um, it's a meeting here to uh, share screen. I I did some um, I did some drawings, um, uh, some paintings of. Uh, uh, after after my uh, after my abduction, um, and uh, so so can you see the paintings or not? Yeah, yes. right there. Yeah. So so on the left hand side, top left hand side, uh, it's um, uh, a uh, figurative like uh, like a, a ET figure, right? Uh, but I tried to do it in the style of, of North American indigenous peoples. Um, and um, and I call that 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 particular painting Kachina, and uh, it's just uh, uh, it's it's just I, I had to express somehow something, okay, and so I, I did this particular thing. The second one to that side I call Messages, and this one was the first painting that I did, and it was uh, inspired inspired by the crop circles. So if you look at the at, at the painting, uh, there are uh, two or three or four different, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've recreated three or four different glyphs that, that occurred in, in England, I think, uh, that time. Um, and uh, so I decided that, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know how to express myself. <clears throat> the, the third painting on the, on the top right is, um, uh, I just call it Night Sky. And um, it was inspired by Van Gogh, of course. <laughs> And, uh, but it's just, um, I just wanted to express that. I don't know why it, it came out. Um, the bottom left is, I call seeds. Um, and um, that one is a very large painting. That was a much bigger painting. Um, the others are about a foot square. The, this, this other one is much larger. Uh, and I just started painting and painting, and this is what I came up with, and I don't know why. But the, again, I have like crop circles 
like to like some of the glyphs on the top left hand corner. Uh, and I have no idea why I put that bird there. No idea. Um, it's, it's just for whatever reason. And then, of course, excuse me, the uh, last excuse me, the painting was just recently, like maybe two years ago, uh, where I, I did that. Uh, I, I felt like I needed to paint the San Francisco experience. So, anyways. Um, Anyway, so that's, that's basically basically it. Um, uh, do you do you think that you might have seen the uh, uh, some of the uh, structure for Project Bluebeam? You know, when I see those stacks, it it kind of gives me an idea that that might have been a spot where all that energy might have been. Oh, when you when you see sorry when you see what. Project Bluebeam, you know, the, yeah. the right. I've, I've heard of it. But it's supposed to be based on holograms or something like that. Yes, but what those stacks remind me of possibly some energy that's stored that way. They kind of hit me that way. And the fact oh. that other people can't see them was very weird, you know, that, oh. that you only you and the other person could see. Oh, oh th 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 those lights. Yeah. 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 Actually, one, one one side note here on that person that was uh, her whole family was abducted, and she's a she's really good at um, she's very intuitive and extremely intuitive. Um, one one story that she related related to me was uh, she's a toy designer, and she's worked for many companies like Fisher Price Toys and Mattel and all these kind of guys, uh, and. Um, she worked for a while in the LA area, Los Angeles area, and um, she. But uh, one day she was. For, she said she was driving on the freeway, and uh, with her with one of her coworkers in the front seat beside her, and um, she she noticed she saw a big UFO following her on her side, uh, but on the other side of the highway, he was just pacing her car, and she got like she got like. She freaked out and said, "Oh no, you know, um, I, all this." And, and she, she was telling her coworker, and her coworker was looking, and she couldn't see anything. She was saying, well, "What are you talking about? What, what's going on?" And um, and in desperation, my friend finally just grabbed the coworker's hand, and at that moment, her coworker could see the UFO, and she freaked out. And uh, and so there is something about you know seeing. Like some people can see them and some people can't. Uh, I don't know what the what the uh, what the deal is for, for that. Um, I know that when I was in the Bay Area, uh, I I saw quite a few UFOs, um, and uh, I only I've never seen any UFOs here in 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 this area in Vancouver in the, in the British Columbia area never. Um, so um, uh, it, it's it's um anyways it's uh it's not something very very uh uh weird that you know is, is it like the aliens are lifting like a, a kind of are they suppressing vision or are they um you know are they, are they just generating screen memories or what, what what's going on i have no idea so uh, can, I, can I give you? Can I give you my my hypothesis on that? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, my yeah. hypothesis is that um, certain people are open psychically. You yeah. know, they're more open-minded, say. Yes. And I believe that uh, these ships and the beings can be on two dimensions at, at a time. So okay. I think that sometimes what we're seeing is we're, we're seeing through our dimension into another dimension when we're able to see them. Okay. okay. Uh, I think they are interdimensional beings, not necessarily that they're not physical. They probably have a physical aspect to them, but I right. think that they're more interdimensional than they are physical. And, they, and when they take us, they take us there. When I was abducted, my body was not physically in, in where it should have been at all. So they do take not just the soul, but they also take the body. 
I think, into another dimension. Another, another dimension. I think that's how I've been able to understand it a little bit. Okay. You know, if that helps at all. That, that's, yeah, thank you. I, 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 just, I just don't have... This thing has been so... Um, uh, how can I put it? Confusing, to say the least. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't... Um, I don't understand why certain things happen and or why some certain things happen actually to certain people uh, and not others, for example. Um, and even for, let's say, people who have experiences with UFOs and ETs and that sort of thing, um, why do some people have certain, one kind of experience and which seems to be, uh, how can I put it, completely opened up? I mean, they have the full gamut of the experience, you know, and, and they get taken on ships and they get going to their planets and, and they get to talk with these people and everything else. And other people and on the other end of the spectrum are people like me who are just like terrified out of their wits. <laughs> and it just and, they, and there's no there's no quid, quid pro quo, like, you know, from the ETs. Like it's like we're just going to use you and that's it. And you don't need to know anything. Uh, you're a vegetable, you're, you know, you're a mushroom, you know. That, so, that brings me to a question that I have for you, Norberto. Yeah. You know, we've been talking with a lot of people who have dealings with greys. Yeah. You know, some of our members are, have had very positive uh, situations with the greys and, yeah. um, and others that have had sort of mixed. But do you think that you were involved in any part of the hybridization program? Do you think... Well, uh, and they used you when you say they used you that they they took DNA from you. Uh, oh. You know that, that's that's a really good question, and my short answer is I don't know. Uh, but but what what I do know is this person uh, that um, this Japanese lady that uh, that she um, she you know I used to talk with her uh, after I moved up here. And I kind of, you know, I have to confess that I kind of missed interactions with the with the, with the UFOs, uh, and so um, uh, with the ETs, I mean. And I kind of like wanted to. Um, I told her that I really love to get a second chance. I probably was very rude to the ETs. <laughs> I was just like probably like swearing and, and just like just giving them off these really big vibes, these negative vibes, right? And I would think like, okay, I wish I could just redo that, have a have a redo and just sort of like, and the way I describe it to her, I want to sit down and have a coffee with them, you know, just a chat, you know, and everything else. And whenever I told her that, she would laugh her head off. <laughs> and I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, like, what's so funny? And then she'd tell me, as she as, as she sees the stuff, she says, yeah, you know, you silly, you're, you're a silly guy. You know, you are one of them. She would always tell me, you are one of them. And 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 every time every time that topic came up, she would always say this, right? So um, it, it's just it's just like very weird uh, that that would be. Uh, um, uh, you know, like you're talking about if I'm involved or anything like that. Um, uh, one of the things that I, I, I noticed was that years and years ago, uh, you know, they had, they were talking about like um, indigo children and adults and things like that. And um, they had like checklists and, and whatever they came up with. And I would go through the checklist and it was always like, yeah, you are, you are one kind of thing. But um uh, it's like, you know, but that's not satisfying. It's like, it's like, it's, it's, it was more like maddening because you don't know if you are or not. And then this is, it's, it's, it's just adding more fuel to this, to this fire, uh, of, of not knowing. And, uh, and it's always maybe this and maybe that, and perhaps this and perhaps that, you know, so, so I don't, you know, like, this is why, like, like, I've been trying to piece together all these things and go through all these things. And, and I've become, like, I guess, hyper vigilant in my, in my life because uh, I am, I'd like, 
honestly, uh, I don't have many friends at all. Like I just do not, I cannot get on the same wavelength as most people. And I, I, know, I don't say that, like, I don't, I'm not trying to be like superior or anything. No, it's not it. I just feel like I just never was able to get into like, for example, sports. Never. Since I was young. I never get into sports. Uh, I never get into uh, like all these kind of other things like going to games and watching sports or doing doing sports uh, and that sort of thing. So, um, uh, or drinking. I don't go to bars. I don't drink alcohol. I never got into it. I, I, I don't care. I don't smoke. I never smoke, et cetera, et cetera. I never got into that. And uh, and I always thought, you know, like like that doesn't appeal to me. Like really does not appeal to me at all. And so, uh, so like I keep looking at trying to find some, I don't want to say answer because I don't think I'll ever get an answer, but I want to get some sort of clues as to why I'm like this. And uh, I mean, it could be just be like life, you know, <laughs> you know, it's uh, life, the universe and everything sort of thing. So, um, and, um, but anyways, I just, uh, I feel like all these things that that happen are important, even though they're very little details. I think I always see them as important details. Uh, maybe it's my my engineering side, you know. Uh, the, the details are important, you know. And, uh, uh, you know. So, um, anyways, um, I wanted to say something to Norberto. Okay. Yeah. So Norberto, I want, first of all, I wanted to thank you for your incredible honesty. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And it's very hard to be that raw and that honest. Um, you know, I, I, I hope that you find some kind of spiritual family here among us, uh, a safe place. We have, uh, Brian and I created this room and now the, the website, uh, the YouTube place, Basically, for people, for our members to be able to tell, to to do disclosure one story at a time, so that in a way, my my um, my impetus in this is the same as yours. I want to find the others that are like me. I have the same situation that you have. You know, I, I can have friends to a certain point, but then you get into this other very real realm. And people just want to laugh, and they want to poo-poo it, exactly. and they want to, they, you know, they want to call you names. In fact, UFO Mimi is is like a derogative name, but I've decided to embrace it. You know, right. I've decided to embrace that, and that That's is the name. You know, but um, you're very welcome here, and I'm 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 certainly happy myself to have heard your story, and I hope that um, through the other stories that you hear. Uh, from all our other members, that it, it, it starts to piece together for you in some kind of cohesive way. And I, I'm, I'm really, really thankful for your testimony. Thank yeah. you. Namaste. Yeah, that was really good, Norberto. And your first time, I can understand you must have been nervous your first time. So now you've done it. So now you can go on the actually, UFO talk circuit. I, I, <laughs> I, I still have a heck of a lot of stuff to cover, but I will do it like next time. Maybe. Well, we can do a, we'll yeah, we can do a part two. Time. We discussed that before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so for questions, um, I, I had uh, three questions and then we can open it up. I guess everyone, sure. um, you mentioned uh, when you're a little boy, about three years old, this woman came to the door. Um, I've read cases, um, a fellow in the early, early to mid 1950s, this fellow, he was uh, about five years old and um, he was uh, tested with a bunch of other little kids for their psychic powers. They had a, a little blue ball they'd roll across the floor with their psychic powers. And uh, this kid, he, he didn't make the cut. He wasn't good enough, so they sent him home, but he remembered this. So it seems the American government, uh, even in the early 1950s, they understood that these aliens used telepathy. They had to develop their own people. So this, uh, you were born in 1952, right? Yeah, that's right. So this happened around 1955. So the Canadian government was probably part of this American program. So I'm just wondering uh, if oh, they, they, the, they... When that time that... Okay, okay. So we're just we're getting at, yeah. And this is Alberti. So maybe uh, they're already aware of you. Like you said, there was talk in the neighborhood of your 
drawing, you're looking down at the house. So maybe became the awareness and they thought, well, maybe we should take a look at this kid or recruit this kid. And then your mother put up a fuss. So you're already on their radar. And then later on, you have this job interview in your early 20s. So actually, actually, it's, it's very interesting uh, 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 terminology on their radar because um, through my through my adult life or through my through my life actually like um, uh, I usually got into um, I was picked to go into like um, when the, when the in Winnipeg for example when the first when they first started uh, segregating kids uh, based on uh, IQ kind of scores and that sort of thing um, I always thought I was the dumbest uh, SOB in, in the, on the planet you know and the universe because. You know, I, I I was really I wasn't I wasn't academically inclined. Let's put it this way, and and uh, but I could do I could do I could pass. Basically, I would I would I would study the night before whatever it was, and I'd, I'd get a, P, a pass. You know, and 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 uh, but I would never I wouldn't hit the books and get like a A plus plus or something. But I wasn't I wasn't in, in that mode. I didn't think that way. I didn't uh, feel that way. But um, later on. Um, I remember that um, I met people like when when I started, you know, after I started doing the, the, the qigong kind of thing, and I went to this. Uh, I'll get to, into this next time, maybe. Uh, I started going to this Taoist meditation class, um, and um, I met this uh, retired professor there, uh, and uh, he recruited me. To, I mean, he he was he was really a brilliant guy. I mean, he was really a brilliant guy. Uh, he had he's a, he was a Caltech grad, uh, and um, he had invented a new kind of mathematics to compute the fast Fourier transform (FFT), which is used everywhere in technology these days. Everywhere, um, and um, uh, it's used everything from commercial products to phones to military to radars. You know, you name it. it it's uh, TVs. Uh, video, everything. So um, he had figured out a way, a different way to do it that had not been thought of before ever. And the way that people had been doing it up to that point had been known for a long time, okay, a long time, decades at least. And so, uh, but the problem with that method was that uh, it used a lot of computing power and and if you wanted to use that sort of thing and you needed that sort of thing, let's say in your cell phone, that um, it, it took an extraordinary amount of like, battery power. Like it was it used, a, a, it was called digital signal processor, DSP, more memory, et cetera, and it's running this algorithm to do all these things. And he figured out a way to do it with extremely little logic and uh, extremely little power, therefore, and much faster than the other way. And um, and I went with him, my wife and I, and plus another guy who used to be um, who used to be, let's say, in in uh, in one of the American uh, like uh, JPL uh, guys, like a pretty pretty important guy in JP, pretty high up. Uh, so when, what year was this? This was in two thousand and one. Two thousand and one. Um, and. We we went all together on, on a trip and uh, we were greeted by uh, some Chinese officials and this guy I mean it was, it was supposed to be for this particular guy because I had I had developed uh, uh, I had taken his math he wasn't an engineer uh, he was a, a physicist I think I think um, and I had taken his math and I had translated it to hardware. And I built the very, very first working version of this of this algorithm in, in hardware. And um, I did I did like a lot of work at that time for this guy. Because he, I met him at the uh, at the Taoist meditation thing. He got to know me. Uh, he got to know my background. And then he asked me to do this. He, he asked me several times, and each time I declined because how can I put it in my in my life. I'm, like I'm an inventor, I'm an avid in inventor, and I, I've had so many different inventions. And um, uh, one of the one of the uh, and and he knew this, and so he asked me to join him to make this this thing a reality for for, for him. And um, 
uh, we started a company, uh, a small company to, to, to do this, to sell this intellectual property, this IP. And that's another whole story. Uh, but we went to China all together. And when we went to China, the Chinese government actually would, drove us in a convoy uh, to uh, one of the universities in China called Qinghongdao University. And um, he, um, Qinghongdao was the, the, the seat of uh, the, the expertise in uh, the FFT, the Fourier Transform uh, Technology. And uh, he, um, we went there and when we, we, we arrived there, I was totally surprised. It was like, he received like a VIP, total VIP welcome. They had the, the Chinese uh, media there with the cameras and everything. And, and uh, they had the, 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 the big seat couches with the little um, doilies on the, on the sleeves and on the, on, the, on the arms, the chairs and that sort of thing. And the president of that university, who was the foremost expert, I think in FFT, if I remember correctly, in China at the time, he read a kind of a speech, prepared a speech and, and awarded this guy, this professor, uh, with some award of some paper or plaque, I can't remember what it was, and said that this was the first breakthrough in something like, I don't know, over 60 years or something in FFT. It was a remarkable breakthrough. And they were honoring him for, for this for this achievement. And um, so I so I, I, when I inquired into this guy's background, like later I, I got to befriend him more. Turns out, well, according to him, he was, he said he claims he was on the first team to develop the very first integrated circuit in the world. And that was for the US military. And so he was right in there. His also his other, other sort of um, resume, uh, CV kind of thing was that he he was um, he had actually worked for SRI, so Stanford Research Institute. And SRI was a known sort of a CIA uh, working group kind of a thing. Because I think they, 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 they did uh, remote viewing there. So I think they started remote viewing and stuff. Um, with Ingo Swan, I believe it was there. I'm not sure. I can't even quite remember. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, you know, I, I found, so I, I hear, I, I meet this guy that has these credentials. He's like not a usual person. Okay. Uh, so he's quite up there. Um, and then later, um, through him for this project, I meet this other lady from China who is very, very well, very high placed in, in government circles or social circles. And I do, I try to do a project with her later on and I can, maybe I can talk about that the next time. Um, and so we, we traveled to China and, uh, and I remember that we went to places that normal, normal people would not be able to go, only, only like quote unquote VIPs would be able to go to. Uh, and that, and that in itself was mind boggling for me too. And so I, I've always seemed to meet these kind of people and, um, and I don't know why that is, like why, why that interest? Why am I, you know, it could be just karma, you know, I'm just, you know, I've seen these people before in other lifetimes and, and, I, and I'm just, I know them for, for some reason or whatever, and it's just my time to meet with them again. And it just happens to be in these particular areas and whatever. Well, if you think so, of your job interview, though, right, in early 20s, yeah, maybe, it was yeah. a, maybe it was a secret space program, maybe it was human or a combination of human and alien. Maybe yeah. they wanted to take you to the moon and work there and you didn't make the cut and they didn't hire you. So they made it look kind of conventional. They as usual. Send you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, I have no idea what that was all about. I still don't. I know other other people probably want to ask you questions. There's 16 of us here, but I want to ask you about your uh, your your mother. Like your sons had nosebleeds. Your other son probably saw grace. And as we all know, these things run in families. So what about your mother, your father? What do you know about your grandparents? What do you know about your great grandparents? Oh, that's a complicated story as well because um, my family background is kind of like I say complicated. Um, Father, you're Italian, right? You're, yeah, I'm, I'm you're Italian. You're born in Italian. I'm Italian. Italy. 
Yeah, I was, I was born in, in Tuscany, yeah, uh, 1952, but um, in Toscana. So, but basically, uh, uh, in those days, um, uh, it was uh, my my father was in in sort of state security kind of thing, okay. And he met my my mother in a refugee camp because my mother and her family were actually refugees from a city called Fiume. Okay, and which today is Rijeka in in I think in um, in Croatia. Okay, but during the Second World War and during that time, it used to be part of the Italy, then Austro-Hungarian Empire, then Italy, then 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 the Germans took it over and they were bombing the crap out of it, and then the Allies took it over, they were bombing the crap out of it, and et cetera, et cetera. And finally, after the war, um, from what I understand, uh, Tito came in. Uh, uh, the communists came in, and they basically uh, um, gave an ultimatum to people who were Italian descent in in there. Okay, even though they were generational, many times were there. So, uh, so my mother and her family, her, her parents and her, her sisters, uh, had to flee, became became refugees, and after the war, and they ended up in several camps inside Italy. And in one of these camps in, in Tuscany, my mother met my dad, uh, they got married, et cetera. They had me uh, before we, we moved to, to uh, Canada. And so, your dad worked for the state. That might be meaningful, right? Was he military? Yeah, he was, he was, I think it was sort of military or paramilitary or something. Well, that matters a lot with abduction, right? It matters a lot if you're military. It, it increases the odds, right? Yeah. And so, and so like, uh, so like my mother's side of the family is kind of a mixture of Italian, um, uh, Croatian, Hungarian, uh, uh, um, Aus Austrian. Okay, so I have a little bit of Austrian blood. I think my grandfather was partly Austrian or, or Austrian, and on, on my mother's side. And uh, so so basically, yeah. So it's um, uh, yeah. There's it, it, it's complicated. <laughs> It's a complicated kind of a, of a, of a situation, family situation. Uh, Maybe part two, you can talk more about that. But it's also, yeah. I want to comment on your artwork. Um, the painting of the bird had uh, like the gray wrap around eyes and look a bit like a gray. I wonder that was an impression. Yeah, I, got yeah. I, I, yeah I noticed that too when I did that. I was thinking, of, uh, you know, I sort of like, I needed to do that, but I didn't know why. So, and why the bird? <laughs> and why call it seeds? Um, it's like seeding something. Is it I, I, on a planet? Um, you know. Um, well, with the abduction program, right in the hybrid program and reproduction, seeds, sperm seed, that seems to be appropriate, maybe. Yeah. 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 Should we open it up to other people? I feel like we got to share you with everybody here. You know, like Ian Hailing's here from England. So, do you yeah. want to? Do you have any comments, questions, Ian? Yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Norberto. That was a brilliant uh, presentation. It was really good that you're laying it out, but it's encouraging as well to hear that uh, that perhaps I helped you to trigger some memories. And um, this yeah. always happens when I, when I get involved. It's a side effect, I'm afraid. Uh, often, often people tell me you've triggered something here. Uh, so as long as you're okay with it, I think that's good. We'll, yeah, it's my we'll keep, keep going with it. Yeah. Um, you asked why me? I heard that several times. That's something we always hear. Well, the, the why me? Brian Brian hit on that straight away. Uh, you were you got you got noticed uh, as a child. You definitely got noticed, and I would imagine that you were probably watched before that. Maybe even from birth. That, um, that there's something in the genetic line that uh, that you are you are being watched and monitored. Uh, not necessarily just by the ETs, but by the government as well, and by the government liaison with ETs. That's why this the government woman, apparently government woman, uh, appeared and wanted to take you to a so-called, well, one of these, let's say, secret schools. Reminds me very much of Whitley Strieber and his uh, Randolph Air, Air Base stories, uh, where he was actually taken as well. And this happens with, with the usually with the agreement of the parents and sometimes the parents don't know why they go along with it 
because it does seem a bit strange. However, it, it does seem that later on, your mum, your mother did realise that you went to this job interview and that you went off to New Jersey uh, through Philadelphia, etc., uh, to, to actually go to a job interview. And what I found was a, a little bit strange there was you, that your mother actually remembered the name of the company. I, I was I was very very surprised that she remembered the name of the company just 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 like that. She she just remembered right away. So that that is strange. Now. I've done a little bit of research. There is actually a company in New Jersey called uh, called uh, Base Ten. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not. I haven't. I haven't searched for that since that time in the. I think in the nineties. Yeah. I'm looking at it now. Base Ten Systems. That's B A S E. Then Ten T E N in capitals. Systems Incorporated. It's a software technology company manufactures yeah. execution and clinical supply systems and services for the pharmaceutical, chemicals, and medical products industries. Uh, so I've looked this up. It's actually on the website with uh, Bloomberg. Strangely enough, it doesn't list a website and it doesn't list a number of employees. Ah, OK. But, but that's interesting. They're based in uh, in New Jersey in, let's well, say. They are. Um, sorry? Well, they are based in New Jersey. OK, when I remember yes. when I remember when I looked up Base 10 and the uh, and the article on that of uh, uh, was um, that Base 10 was a military contractor, but what they did was uh, they sold off bits and pieces, and I think the software end of it went to, I believe at that time it was a German company, some some company in Germany, I believe. That, that's like a long time ago, right now, 90s, okay? So so uh, I, I knew about the software aspect of it, uh, uh, that, had, that had been sold off, but this is new to me. This information is new to me, but it's really interesting. Uh, so yes, that, that that's the only information I can I can find on them. So that is that is very interesting. Now there also seems to be what we call, what we call a predictive element in this. That is when you go for this interview, they start talking about Mensa, and that's before you actually become a member of Mensa or or uh, get involved with Mensa. They also talked about the, um, the microprocessors. Again, that seems to be predictive before it actually becomes mainstream, comes on board. Also, we've got the story of you working in the basement, uh, working on something. You know, you're, you're, you're there ready to go, cracking on with, with some technology that, uh, that you seem to have a gift for. Uh, moving forwards again, we've got, uh, let's say, this um, this military military um, connection, and again the, the time the time that I've noted as well of, of three thirty a.m. Well, that's that's significant. A lot of people are seeing those 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 numbers as well. You said that um, a num you you you're not really one to go to have a lot of friends. Not meaning to say yeah. that you're not popular, but you're probably like myself. I don't seem to go out and, and source my friends or find my friends friends usually come to me and you know I, I can probably seem a bit that I'm not that friendly with other people so um the other thing is this the sports ac aspect I'm not really into the into sports never have been really it's uh, it's like a it's um it's kind of like uh a kind of uh, the competitive aspect doesn't really interest me yeah. I'm not interested in competitiveness. Of course, yes, I'd be interested in in doing, uh, let's say, sports and activities such as kayaking, etc. But I've got no interest in any competitiveness, and I believe that's another factor that's that's underrated and underexplored. And I actually, expect a lot of us would would agree with that. Actually, may I say that I may interject here for a second uh, that uh, sports, like I totally agree with what you just said. I, I'm not interested in any kind of team or competitive kind of sports. What, when when I've done, I, I guess it, I must include them in the realm of, of sports. Uh, I started learning martial arts like a long time ago and that, and that led me into doing the Qigong and, and that's, I think that was the path that I, that I was on. But it was always, like, basically it's competing against myself. It's basically trying to improve myself. That's the only, I'm not interested in whatever anybody else is doing. And that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, a self-improvement. Uh, 
our lifestyle and method forward uh, with a, a spiritual background as well. I, I can identify with that. Uh, and just one final thing with with them, um, with uh, yeah, it, it, I just hope that it can start that you can hopefully get yourself um, some sort of recovered memories. I'd recommend you perhaps look again. It looks like you were thwarted at your attempts at trying to get uh, these memories recovered. But I would keep at it if I was you and uh, and look towards getting some um, some hypnosis or regression to try and help you forwards and maybe some more of these memories will be triggered as well as we go forwards i i have to break it off here i'm afraid because i've got a family commitment and uh, uh but i'm going to be listening in on the side and i'll probably come back to you guys a bit later on if that's fine thank you very much well, thank you thank you brian for giving me first first call yeah last thank week you. you went to dinner with your parents so we'll probably be seeing you in another four hours from now we'll still be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so I'll speak to you later. Take yeah, care. Thanks for coming in. We always appreciate your input. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Who else would, uh, I guess we could use the hand symbol, you know, under reactions on the bottom of uh, the Zoom here. There's a little hand signal if you want to put it up your hand in case there's a whole bunch of people at the same time, like in school, you know. And uh, then, uh, yeah, people would have questions, comments if they like. Don't be shy. Oh, Cynthia's got her hand up. Okay, Cynthia, you can go first. <laughs> Thank you. That presentation was remarkable and your artwork is out of this world. <laughs> Excuse the pun. It's fabulous. Um, what I find when I came to this group, I did not um, uh, 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 speak of myself or think that I was an experiencer. Since then, I've had some a great talk with, with Brian as well as Jeff. So, um, and the thing that it's interesting about Mensa, the thing you're talking about Mensa, because when I was 13, I was involved in this school called No Place, which was built on Summerhill. Now, the, now I'm I'm 67, so this is way back. And uh, they had somebody come in from Menza and test us all. And I remember I was the one that uh, they ended up they going to my parents, although I was living on my own even at that age. Um, but um, uh, apparently, my my IQ was ridiculous my mother would never tell my mother is a member of Menza, but she would never tell me what the score was but then i found that very interesting right. also this thing about the white light or the golden light as you speak about it mm -hmm. because for me when in jeff's talk he talked about that and and that triggered memories for me well it was a very profound experience for me but i thought it was spiritually associated too i i yeah. I, I hear what you're That's saying right. i have the whole dilemma of what is what what could this be? And and now I've totally lost what the other things that, that, that you said that were that were um, that really resonated with me. Um, but uh, but thank you because a, as I attend these groups, I'm just discovering so much about. Oh, I know what the other thing was. For a year for for over a year, I had a UFO that kept coming and it spent hours and it would wake me up in the middle of the night or in the middle of the morning and I would have to go out on my terrace and I had this profound sense of of some kind of connection I didn't know what it was and this went on for over a year and I just was told about the website ufobc and I looked I spent hours going through every single year that I was at this a place where it happened and there was only one that I could see that was even closely or remotely similar and I'm going this thing went on for over a year how could nobody else see this UFO and, and it was a the, uh, Norberto saw a triangular two triangle UFOs uh, we haven't discussed yet and you saw a triangular UFO as well right it was a triangle and it kept wow. coming back and back and back and for hours it would be in the sky actually As like, yeah like but like uh Back in about in 1999, and I remember the exact date because it was Halloween. So I'll discuss it next time, maybe. But but um, I I was I was had a brand new telescope, uh, one uh, like a five inch telescope, basically a 125 uh, um, millimeter telescope, uh, and or anyways, uh, or centimeters kind of telescope. And basically, um, uh, I uh, I was. Looking at the moon at the Terminator, you know, where the light and the shadow and the light meet, so you can really see the 
the, the, the terrain on the on the moon. You can really mm-hmm. the shape yeah. everything else, right? Like mountains and all that kind of stuff. It's fascinating to me. It was the, so I had it on the highest magnification, and and I'm, I'm just going to be really quick because I can discuss this next time. But uh, as I was watching this through my viewfinder, so I, I had about a 208 times magnification, I think. Uh, that so I was looking at a maximum I could I could I could get on that scope of the time with what I had, and so I looked at it. And um, as I'm looking at this through this field of view, this thing on the moon, all of a sudden, these two black, completely black equilateral triangles fly in, like in, 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 in a wingman formation, right through the center, right through the center of my field of view. And it took them about like five or six seconds to go through that. And I'm thinking, and, but I didn't have any lights. I didn't see any. There was no distortion around them or or glow or anything like that but but uh they they were just I, i'm just like it was just like this like in your face kind of a thing right it's like right through the thing and I, and I was staring in i probably was drooling or my, my mouth was hanging open when i was watching this <laughs> trying to figure out what the heck's going on and and it wasn't until they had left the field of view that i just got angry with myself so i should have had a camera i should have had a camera i mean what are the odds? I mean, the odds are so astronomical that you, you, you at, a, at a random time, a random place of the of the moon's surface, a random location, um, a, you know, uh, you know, like that I would actually see this and and right through my centered field of view. So, you know, it's just it's just it's just astounding. But it was black triangle. What was, what was your book? Well, for me, it was about that nobody else can see them, that, that you, Mimi was okay. talking about it and you were talking about it because when I searched all those years, I'm going, there's no way that nobody else in my area could not have seen this freaking UFO because it would wake me up at like three in the morning, whatever. I would come out on my terrace and it would be there. It was, it was and, and it was happening day after day at, for, a, for a, close to a year. Wow. And and no and there were no accounts of this on the BC UFO and I'm going how hmm. can that be you know I kept going over the same <clears throat> I missed something and and I couldn't find anything and so you know so I, and I know that I wasn't dreaming fortunately or it was not a dream because I also called people about it so I have congress you know I call people oh, to talk to them about it or my daughter who I'd make come out when she was visiting me to see it right okay. so um, I know it was there. Yeah, but can you tell me, like, do you, do you remember what color it was? Or was well, no, I just remember, I just remember that it was a triangle. It was huge, and it had lights spinning. I remember two for sure, oh, if not oh, three. Okay. Like and the that. lights were spinning, and they were like red, blue, green. What I, I can't remember, but there would be lights spinning like little balls. Oh, can I can I share this? This is another one of these memories that we just triggered. Um, uh, in uh, I just want to tell tell everybody uh, that. My wife and I visited Hawaii, um, the big island, I think, uh, uh, back in, oh, I don't remember now, 2000 something. Uh, I, I have to look that up, but I, ju- I just remembered about it now. And uh, part of the thing is that we rented a four wheel drive so we could go up to, there's the, uh, the, the, the telescope on the top of um, Kilauea, uh, I think, uh, they have a, a, a like a, astronomy center there uh you know a big telescope and uh but that's at the very peak but below the peak there is also a place where you can stop and when we went there they had like a little shack where you can buy hot drinks and and uh, snacks and whatnot and memorabilia and the um and there were a lot of telescopes like smaller like hobby kind of telescopes set up like uh, people would bring them there or it was part of the I don't know if it was the, the astronomy center had done this for uh, trying to get an interest a, a general interest uh, in, in astronomy for people and they were really nice telescopes you know better than what I had for sure and uh, I remember uh, one guy had a camera a CCD camera mounted to one of his telescopes and he had a had a, uh, a laptop there and he was he was and, and I and I talked to him and he seemed to be all by his, his lonesome and there were lots of telescopes and a lot of people there looking at things and um, he was a young guy um, and I saw I, I chatted him up and he he eventually told me like I, I started asking him have you ever seen a UFO okay 
-hmm. And that was like one of those things that is like, you know, you, you don't really ask people either. It's a scientist is not supposed to talk about UFOs, you know, <laughs> it's verboten, you know. So, um, so, uh, but anyways, I, I sort of kept at it, like not trying to be abrupt or anything, just trying to, and he finally confessed, he said that his mom uh, in the 70s uh, had gone to one of the valleys in Nevada, I think, New Mexico or Nevada, big expanse, was nobody there, it was a big valley. She was part of the U.S. geological survey team or something, a scientist, a ge geologist, and they were camped out there uh, for a few nights doing some things, and he, he, told, he said that his mother eventually told him that one night they were camped out there, and this huge triangular object came over them and blocked out all the stars and it just kept going and going and going and going, just covered everything. It was just like, they were in awe. It was, it was, it seemed like it was, they could almost touch it. It was just so low, you know? And, um, and so, uh, and so like, I just wanted to share that, that, you know, that other people have seen these things too, but uh, usually it, it, it won't be on the news for sure. <laughs> Yeah, nothing nothing was reported nothing at all I, I couldn't, couldn't find any I found one one that was kind of similar because it then the only way it was similar was it talked about this thing kept coming back yeah. and then, you know and this thing kept coming back and back and back and to the point where it would I would always know when it was there something in me and I would be out there it yeah. still gives me goosebumps yeah that's really amazing but it was about that, that nobody else could see it I mean well the you know like uh, anyway yeah. So thank you for, for that, because it just re reaffirms or or actually doesn't reaffirm because I didn't think that I had that to begin with. But now I'm beginning to see. So thank you so much. And your artwork is just spectacular. Thank you. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. So anyone else? Questions, comments? There's still 13 of us here on the Zoom. Shy group of people here. You can we can unplug your mics anytime. Stephen, are you? Yes, I'd like to just mention uh, that uh, Roberto's presentation, uh, very um, in depth and uh, enlightening. And one of the things that I experienced just being at this meetup this time is uh, on Norberto's presentation of his artwork. I actually was uh, got a vision of. Uh, of the bird, uh, the the one that actually has the wings, and I I, I was drawing doing some drawing, and that's before that his his actual presentation of that came. So I think that's oh, a confirmation. Wow. <laughs> well, that's really great. Like, is, 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 do you did you know why you were drawing that bird? Because I don't know why I drew that bird. I, I um, have no idea. it's just something to do where uh, uh, maybe the time period. And then, um, because the, there's been times when I've actually been on these meetups where there's actually been uh, interdimensional entities that will actually be seen near the person oh. that's giving a presentation or, or is talking. And uh, boy, is that ever something that sort of even gives you a chill? Because it's like, I can imagine. there's something there that you know, uh, in other words, the distance in time, but yet it even projected uh, the one incident where it actually projected itself to me, to where I actually felt the energy come off the screen and and be right here towards, you know, right next to me. That's amazing, Stephen. You should uh, tell us when it's happening live. Maybe the being will, itself will respond if we discuss it. So well, feel free to mention it next time. I, I've been at um, live uh, meetups and, and uh, groups and where I've actually seen things appear above the speaker before uh, whoever was given a presentation in the in a room to where there was like uh, some type of I'd call it some kind of your technology or device that was uh, actually watching us and listening to what was being said. It's so, interesting because yeah. uh, I remember when I was in the in the abduction group in in California. Um, there was an older gentleman at that time who, who could, I mean, he was like really perceptive and he could see like, he could see grays and, and the ETs walking around 
uh, and uh, like wherever, sometimes the group meeting, you could actually see them. And one time, um, the the head of the of that organization I was um, I wasn't at that particular meeting that he was at, but he said that he'd gone he he'd been with this other person that could see things. Uh, I've been at an office space, and this guy was mentioning that oh, there's a DT, there's a gray over there doing something like that. Of course, the 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 uh, this person wasn't able to see what this other guy was seeing, and and he thought oh yeah maybe you know who knows you know, uh, and then all of a sudden um, he said that one of the cabinets, one of the drawers, opened up by himself. <laughs> it looked like it was opening up by itself, and he became a believer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Well, one of the things I was going to ask you, Noberto, uh, have you seen orbs? Uh, yes, and- actually, I, I have not seen them. I took, I have, and in my presentation, I have some, I could do like next week. I have a, a photo uh, when when I was going to China on a business trip uh, and some strange things were happening there. And uh, I, uh, we were driving through uh, uh, Shanxi, Shanxi province. And uh, and it was through the mountains, and it's a little valley there, right up, this is right up against uh, some cliffs. And um, there, I I just was taking pictures randomly, and one of the photos, the, the only one of the photos I took, had like dozens of orbs, like all kinds of sizes, so, so really, really visible. You know, uh-huh. I didn't see them when I was I was actually uh, taking the photos at that time. And in fact, it wasn't until recently when I was getting ready for this presentation. I was looking for some stuff on China and everything else, and I came across this photo, and it was like one of the photos that I normally don't look at, and I said, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. So I just discovered it like a few days ago. Yeah. Now, on those orbs, were they different colors, or were they just uh, yeah, um, I, like I, I, more of a can, let's see. ghosting look of Yeah, let's see what I opaque can white. find here. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Yeah. That is really something. There's a lot of orbs over there. I was oh really gosh. surprised. Really surprised at yeah. how many there were. So, wow, is that in China? That's in China, in Shanxi province. Oh, wow. And uh, and uh, we were in a convoy, <laughs> uh, and uh, we were driving through this area, and we stopped, I guess, for a break. And um, uh, like I say, it's in a valley. It's like right nestled up right against the mountains, right against the cliffs, and. Uh, uh, and I, when I took the picture, I just thought the building was interesting and everything. So I just took a photo of it. I'm not realizing that all these orbs are there. That's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. No, you mentioned, Alberta, that the Chinese lady said um, you're one of them. Also, she was uh, kind of blue blooded, connected to the former uh, royal family in China. So uh, what what does she know about you? Did she know like do you, do you have alien DNA like like Jeff does? Do you think you do? I have no idea. Um, you know we never really discussed that, and uh, um, it's uh, it's just that it was just one of these coincidences that you know like I I um, like why do we keep meeting people that seem to be you know like so so. Um, high up in the hierarchy of, of different things, right? It, it, it makes no sense to me because I don't move in those circles, not at all. So why? You know, it's, 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 again, it's the same thing. This question is, why me? And and again, it's like, why me in this particular kind of instance? So I really don't know. Don't know. Could be alien DNA or past life or something. Yeah, yeah, could be. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I, I suspect, I, and I, I think I suspect it could be with both of them, you know, it's, they're not mutually exclusive, so. Uh, I think uh, I know that I, in my past lives, uh, I've been told, um, you know, uh, besides my own experience with the Roman thing, was that um, I've been told that I was uh, uh, Chinese in many past lives. And uh, mm. and typically in in at least three of those past lives, I was, uh, I was a Buddhist monk and uh, up in Gansu province, which is like a, right next to the Gobi Desert. So that's really... Deserty, and then the other one is uh, uh, where I was a, um, a healer, a medicine man, kind of shaman. I would walk around, like walk from village to village, healing people, and 
and uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, so it's, um, you know, I, I think part of it is definitely to do with, uh, with, the, um, uh, with, the, with the past lives. Look at the chi energy you found in this life right here, healing your past life using chi energy. It's interesting, when I first saw you on our previous Zooms, yeah. I thought you were Chinese. Maybe it's more your character, like you're 100% you're <laughs> Italian. That's an inside joke in our family when yeah. I help because uh, for, since, I'm, since I've known my wife, like we would always go into restaurants or meet other people and everything else. And they would always, and, and invariably they would say, they would ask me, are you Chinese? You know, they, uh, you know, and, and I had to kind of like chuckle and say, oh, no, not really. But uh, I feel Chinese. <laughs> yeah, like you don't actually look Chinese, but I actually thought you were Chinese. And I thought, well, no, he's Caucasian, you know, but it's funny that I, I actually thought that. So maybe it's your character from your past life or your mannerisms from being Chinese. <laughs> it, it, it could be, it could be, yeah. So yeah, that, that seems to come across, and and I and I know I don't look Chinese. So so why do people keep telling, asking me this? I have no idea. <laughs> really? So it happens commonly. Yeah. Is it because you're with your Chinese wife, or just by yourself? They would ask that. Uh, um, most of the time with my wife, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, even individually, like other times where I wasn't with my wife, I mean, people would ask me as well. So. Woo! <laughs> So anybody else want to comment or say anything? I yeah, I, I wanted to ask sure. Roberto about his hands, yeah. about the energy in his hands, yeah. whether you're using it to heal people now, how are you using that energy? Okay, um, yeah, um, it started for me, like I say, like, when was it, like, after, after the uh, abduction, sometime in probably 94 or 95, I think, for me, and... Uh, and uh, the, the uh, history of that, the progression of that was first, uh, I, I, I started feeling like um, my hands started feeling like I'm holding something, like something fuzzy, like, like a buzzing or something like that. Like they look, like I said before, like the, I, the way I described it, is I felt they were pregnant with energy, like, like I was holding fuzzy balls or something like that all the time. And that's maybe why I got the idea to, uh, Put my hands over my wife's hands for that first time mm -hmm. because it just it just felt like like I, can you feel this energy sort of kind of thing and without saying anything about it you know I'm not not wanting to lead her in any way and she she felt it and then after that it became like I became obsessed with, with doing healings I started first with my wife and my my two sons and uh, and as you know and as I did these healings. Like when I do the healings, whenever I do the healings, I never say what I'm doing to anybody. I don't tell them what I'm doing. Uh, and I, I just do the thing. But while I'm doing the healings, uh, I, I have like this intense focus, uh, uh, focused intention, I guess is the word, word of the phrase I'm looking for. And I can move the energy. And these thoughts come to me to move the energy sort of like as light uh, through whatever part of the body or limb or whatever. Or the or the physical body or the auric body or whatever it is, and um, what I found was the, the first time that I experienced this was that um, first was my wife that she could feel the energy. I wasn't focusing at any particular time; was just like putting it over. It wasn't focused. Then one time, my my older son was uh, he was learning drums and he's playing drums and he he'd hurt his thumb, his knuckle on his thumb. It opened up and it was it was pretty really, really painful, and um, so uh, you know I did some healing on, on his thumb again, not saying anything. But what I was doing at that moment was I was focusing this energy, this light inside inside his knuckle to try and heal it. And then he unprompted he he I said, "It feels weird. It feels like you're massaging the inside of my thumb," and that was immediate feedback to me that. Mm -hmm. something is happening okay I don't know what it is you know uh, as an engineer that's not supposed to happen <laughs> science <laughs> and all that kind of stuff right but and that's not supposed to happen but it did happen and then uh, I found that as I did more and more healing to different people um, I would do the same thing I would I'd follow the same procedure where I'd, I'd, I'd be moving the energy in their bodies in some particular part of their body like focusing very intently on a particular thing and not touching them uh, not saying what I'm doing, 
Uh, and people would usually, most of the time, would feedback to me, you know, spontaneously would say, oh, it feels like you're doing this and it feels like you're doing that and everything else. And that's exactly what my, my intention was at that moment, was exactly what I was doing. So, and, and each time that that happened, I guess my engineering training was, was relentless. And uh, it would, I would always say, nah, it can't be happening. Nah, it couldn't be happening. <laughs> you know? I kept doubting what it, that it was happening, but I kept getting reinforced that by these people, by this testimony, that it was actually going on. And the people would get healed and uh, from things and, uh, and uh, feel better and uh, all kinds of things. People would experience certain things. Like, for example, um, there have been people that have done uh, healings for uh, that. Um, uh, for example, uh, when, uh, when, I, when I do the healing, when I do, when I do, do some energy work around their heads, okay, uh, they will feel, some of them will hear noises that nobody else can hear. Some of them will smell fragrances that nobody, a beautiful fragrance nobody else can hear, nobody else can smell. Uh, some people will, will um, for example, one person actually had a light that she said came out of her forehead, uh, a beautiful light that came out of her forehead, and she saw that, and I, I couldn't see it, you know. So uh, different things happen energetically to different people. So there is something to it. I just don't know what it is. I, I still don't know what it is, but uh, but I know it, it it can be very effective. And uh, uh, so 